Good morning, Terry here at Two Rooster Farm. Well, it's the end of November and as you can see, my house is decorated. I love Christmas, my family loves Christmas. Christmas was always a really wonderful time when I was growing up. Lots of family and we just loved, loved the season. And so um, we always decorate at the end of November and my decorations are probably gonna be up till probably the middle of January. Uh, Christmas music. I love Christmas music. If I don't get my quota of Christmas music, I'm sometimes watching it after Christmas or listening to it after Christmas. I'm a little bit of a nut when it comes to Christmas. As you can tell, I love Christmas sweaters. Anyways, I thought it would be um, a great time to uh, share some of the recipes that I make every year. Every year I have so many recipes that I make and that I only make them at Christmas. And, you know, things like appetizers and cookies and things like that. And most of them are, are um, recipes that I have been passed down to me from family. So for my mom and for my grandmothers. And I've compiled a lot of these recipes in, in books that I make, that I've made myself over the years. This one is actually All Occasion Cooking, 4th edition, 2013. So I've made a few since then. So every time I get a recipe that I really like, uh, it goes into a book and then people get it for Christmas. So today I'm going to show you how to make melting shortbread. Um, this was a recipe that my mom used to make a lot. Really simple. It's got like four ingredients. And um, it, it's not like the typical shortbread that's crunchy. It's more of a soft melt in your mouth. That's why they call it melting shortbread. So let's get started. Okay, here we go. So the four ingredients, basically butter, which you have to use real butter, and I took this out the night before, so it is semi-soft. Flour, cornstarch, and some icing sugar. And the other ingredients are just what you're gonna put on top, and I used um, glazed cherries, so I have some red and some green. So we're gonna need three, three cups of flour. Fairly good for Normally when I'm making cookies, I use my KitchenAid, but I just think it's going to be easier because it's a lot of ingredients to go in there and I don't want it to be spilling out. There we go. Easy. There we go. So I'm just going to mash the butter a little bit before I turn my mix master on. Even though the butter was on the counter overnight, it still seems a little hard, but it'll be fine. Once we start mixing, it'll be fine. Start slow. speed on this and it's like getting flour everywhere. Ah! 
don't remember that happening. Well, even good cooks in hindsight should read the recipe first. It says to put the butter and the icing sugar and beat that first, and then add your flour bit by bit. And then you don't have this dust cloud of, of, uh, <laughs> of flour everywhere. <laughs> Anyways, don't do what I did first. Get your butter, put in your icing sugar, and then beat that up. Add your flour gradually. <laughs> see my counter, I've got flour everywhere. Anyways, this is lesson number one, I'm gonna get better. <laughs> All right, back at it. All right, so it did get better. <laughs> As the butter got mixed in, it wasn't so fly away, but consider it's a very, very soft dough and it is kind of crumbly. So you'll know it's you know when it's ready because you know you just get a piece and you just basically it's gonna be kind of a real real wet. It's kind of a soft dough. So I'm just gonna make sure that I make sure I got it all mixed, all the flowers all mixed. And you're just gonna maybe grab like a teaspoon full and put it onto your parchment covered baking sheet. And I add these little, little glazed cherries. Um, my kids would rather I didn't because they don't like the cherry. I just tell them to pick it off if they don't want to eat it. But I like the cherry on it. I like the cherries. So I normally um, cut a little piece of like my mom does. I cut a little piece of the red and then I put two little pieces of green so it looks like a little flower on top of here shortbread. I've actually in the past sometimes added peanuts so that my kids would want to eat it. But the way my mom used to make it was she used to add a little bit of these glazed cherries. So that's how I'm going to do it. Reheat your oven to 325. Red ones in half, and I think that these ones just little tiny, little tiny pieces. So just quickly, what I do, you grab a little bit, probably about that much. Just kind of roll it in a ball. Normally, I would fill them all up, but just to show you right now, so I get this. piece of the red cherry and then I'm going to put two little green ones and it's going to obviously melt down so it kind of looks like that so I'm going to fill up my tray and then I'll be back at the next step So my first tray is ready to go into the oven. And I still have quite a bit left of the dough, so it's probably gonna make probably almost 50, I would, I would think. All right, the oven is warm. You're gonna put them into the oven 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is. Keep an eye on it because they do burn really fast. So just keep looking after about 10 minutes, I'd take a peek. It 
you'll go. The timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and that's starting now. Hey Google, turn off timer. So it's 10 minutes here and I'm taking a peek and it looks like they still need to cook for another few minutes. So I'm gonna put them back on for five minutes. Hey Google, set timer for five minutes. Five minutes and we're starting now. So it was probably closer to about 18 minutes. Let's see, you can sort of see there just a little bit, a bit brown, not brown, too brown, but just, yeah, look good. Now I got a couple more trays to go in. So I'm just letting them cool. These cookies, um, you have to wait till they're cool before you eat them. Um, when they're warm, they're very, very crumbly. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make my mom's melting shortbread, even if I didn't follow the recipe properly. <laughs> but here they are, and they're mm, melting your mouth. Anyways, I'll be back next time with one of my other favorite recipes to make. This is Terry here at Two Rooster Farm. Bye for now.